<sighs> Excuse me. My goodness, I was in the midst of a yawn. My name is Alan, and we are back with more news and politics from around the world for, what is today, Wednesday, July the 6th, I think. No, July 5th. I told you, I'm nearly blind. I, I think I mentioned I have to have cataract surgery at some point here to have them cleared in my eyeballs. Hopefully, I'll see a lot better after that. Anyway, first story we're going to look at. This is from one of the Reddit so, uh, from a uh, subreddit uh, Ask Science uh, If radioactive elements decay over time how is there any left after 4.5 billion years? There's a few different reasons they said. One, some have a very long half-lives, e.g. thorium-232 has a half-life of 14 billion years. So, over 4.5 billion years, if you do the math, there's only been around a 9 to 19% now with bonus correct math reduction in the starting amount incorporated at the time of Earth's formation. So yeah, thorium-232 as the example they're giving, it'll be around for quite a while where it only goes through half-life every 14 billion years. And to clarify on half-life the element um, is divided in half that's literally what a half-life means the amount of time it takes for the element to dissipate to half because all elements do decay So yeah, number two, for some that have shorter half-lives but still relatively long, these were incorporated at high enough concentrations into the earth at the time of formation that we still have measurable amounts left. A decent example of this is uranium-235, which has a half-life of 703.8 million years. If you again do the math, that works out to about a 98% reduction in the amount of uranium-235 compared to the formation of Earth. And we can see that reflected in the amount of U-235 uh, reflected in the things like the estimates of contribution of specific isotopes to the internal heat budget of the Earth. But there's still enough that it represents around 0.7% of all uranium most by far is the much longer lived uranium uh, 238 and number three there are a variety of ways shorter lived isotopes can be produced and thus they still exist as their supply is constantly replenished some are produced during decay chains of other long-lived radioactive isotopes. For example, in the decay chain of uranium-238, uranium-234 
uh, half life of 245,000 years, and thorium 230 half life of 75,000 years are produced during the decay from uranium 238 and PB206. PB. I'm wanting to say that's lead, but I think that's wrong. It's it's not lead. Um anyway. Others are generated by interaction with cosmic rays forming cosmogenic isotopes. Some longer lived examples of these are uh, BE10, 1.38 million year half-life, AL26, 717,000 year half-life, CL 36, 301,000 year half life, and C 14, 5,730 year half life, among others. Okay, C just by itself is carbon. I know that. CL. I'm not sure. AL aluminum? Maybe. Maybe. And I want to say BE is beryllium. Again, I could be very wrong. It's been a while since I've looked at my uh, periodic tables. Does this mean that the formation of the Earth, there was far more radioactive material, or what? or that the material that exists was more potent in the case of uranium-235 for example there was more in the past and there was more likely a lot more of short-lived isotopes that were incorporated during formation not but only exist now in smaller concentrations via creation through other processes like as part of a decay chain or as a cosmogenic isotope. Some of these were likely important for departing, imparting a fair amount of internal heat to the very early Earth. And they give the example of AL-26. Does that imply that matter elsewhere in the solar system or the galaxy has a lot more radioactive isotopes than one would think? Are the significant amounts we know about on other planets? We know very little about the isotopic composition of other planets. We expect it to be very similar to Earth since all planets in our solar system formed from the same gas cloud. Samples obtained from the Apollo missions to the moon and from meteorites identified on Earth more or less agree. There would have been a ma max after the supernova or neutron star collision that formed the nebula that eventually formed our solar system, whatever that was, the amount of radioactive isotopes has more or less been decreasing since then. And remember, in these discussions, they're saying solar system. That's just our sun and the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto, the uh, or 
let's see, Orc Cloud, Kuiper Belt, and the various moons. So that is what they're talking about. They're not talking about the whole galaxy. Remember this. Because the whole galaxy itself is the actual Milky Way and there are numerous, numerous, numerous solar systems in the Milky Way. Just itself. And then outside that, there's numerous, numerous, numerous galaxies. So, yeah. <laughs> but I'll post the link to this discussion in the description box under the video. All right. From news.com.au, Australian. Tirade over cop charged with tasering a 95-year-old great-grandmother. A magistrate has unleashed a blistering tirade after a police officer was charged with tasering a 95-year-old great-grandmother in the chest for uh, at an aged care home. I don't blame him. A magistrate angrily expressed his absolute disgust at the state prosecutor a New South Wales police officer was charged with uh, tasering a 95-year-old great-grandmother, Claire Noland. Kristen... Christian White, 33, appeared via audiovisual link in Kuma Local Court on Wednesday after being charged with discharging his weapon at the dementia patient at an aged care facility in Kuma who fell backwards and sustained fatal injuries. On Wednesday, Magistrate Roger Clisdell blasted the Crown Prosecutor's decision to allow the suspended police officer to appear in court virtually. Who runs this court, Mr. Stewart? You or me? He asked Crown Prosecutor Sally Stewart in a raised voice. So, yeah... The guy's using a taser on a 95-year-old great-grandmother that caused her to fall backwards and, you know, receive fatal injuries. Jeez. This is from Wisconsin Public Radio. You know, we talked about how many states were pushing work ages back down because many companies were not wanting to pay, you know, regular workers to do jobs they thought younger people could do for less. Well, this is the result. Teenage boy dies following an industrial accident at northern Wisconsin sawmill. OSHA is investigating, has made a referral to Labor Department for possible child labor violations. A 16-year-old boy died Saturday from injury sustained at an, in an industrial accident at a sawmill in a northern Wisconsin county. An Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, is investigating the fatality and has made 
a referral to the U.S. Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division for possible child labor violations concerning hazardous occupations. According to Scott Allen, the Labor Department's Regional Director for Public Affairs and Media Relations. The Florence County Sheriff's Office was called last Thursday to, uh, to a report of an unresponsive teenager at the Florence Hardwoods Logging Company. The Sheriff's Office says the teen was transferred to a local hospital before being sent to Children's Wisconsin, a pediatric hospital in Milwaukee. He died from his injuries Saturday. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family, friends, students, and co-workers. Um, the Department of Labor and the Sheriff's Office is not providing additional information at this time. Florence Hardwood did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Officials have not released the teen's name. A GoFundMe post set up for the family said the rural community in Florence is in absolute shock. A comment on the page of the family member said the boy is an organ donor and his loss will bring new life to seven more people. This death comes amid a push over the last two years to loosen regulations governing what jobs minors can perform in the workplace. Lawmakers in 14 states, including Wisconsin, have proposed rolling back child labor laws against, er, according to the nonprofit Economic Policy Institute. So yeah, like I was saying, there's been this push and suddenly we see why it shouldn't happen. Why it shouldn't be done. But, oh, they want to do, have them do the kind of stuff that normal paid employees would do. So they don't have to pay them near as much. This is from Nature.com. Risks of synchronized low yields are underestimated in climate and crop model projections. According to the abstract, uh, simultaneous harvest failures across major across major crop producing regions are a threat to global food security. Concurrent weather extremes driven by strongly meandering jet stream could trigger such events, but so far this has not been quantified. Specifically, the ability of state-of-the-art crop and climate models to adequately reproduce such high-impact events is a crucial component for estimating risk to global food security. Here we find an increased likelihood of concurrent low yields during summers featuring meandering jets in observations and models. While climate models accurately simulate atmospheric patterns associated surface weather anomalies and negative effects on crop responses are mostly underestimated in bias-adjusted simulations, giving the unidentified model biases future assessments of regional and concurrent crop losses from meandering jet States remain highly uncertain. Our results suggest that model blind spots for such high impact but deeply uncertain hazards have to be anticipated and accounted for in meaningful climate risk assessments. Let's see. 
discussion, methods, see where is our conclusion. Would like you to go away. References, acknowledgements, okay. Uh, during years with more than one wave seven of event, the probability of concurrent low yields in increased by a is increased by a factor of 1.6 or 60% compared to years with no wave seven event. But essentially what they're saying is climate change has a good probability of completely decimating crop production. So we ha no longer have the ability to produce the level of crops we had been. Okay, Euronews.com. I'm here for my grandchildren. Two pensioners storm Wendel, uh, Wimbledon Court to demand climate action. Two pensioners in their 60s stormed a Wimbledon Court to demand the UK government halts all new licenses and consents for oil, gas, and coal. Two environmental activists have been arrested at Wimbledon on Wednesday after running onto one of the courts and disrupting a match by throwing orange confetti onto the grass. The pair are from a group Just Stop Oil who are calling on the UK government to stop licensing of all new oil, gas, and coal projects. But yeah, absolutely. We just looked at a article about how climate change is potentially going to cause severe crop production issues and it's going to make it harder to feed people and this is what needs to be done we need to push for action now it can't be oh we'll eventually get there uh I did. Why are you being a pain in my butt? Really, dude? Uh. Click always allow. This is the one I wanted to see. I don't care. Anyway, it's an article that says, She to Putin, if you use a nuke, 
we won't have your back. So, yeah, uh, Chinese ruler Xi Jinping personally warned Vladimir Putin against using nuclear weapons in Ukraine. So, it is a definite red line Putin does not want to cross. Except this is from France24.com. Macron's call to cut off social media during riots sparks a backlash in France. Remember, we talked about how there were protests over the murder of this individual and trying to shut down social media to calm things down Macron is only added fuel to the fire this is from Middle East I A uh, report finds deliberate mass killings of Ethiopians along Saudi-Yemen border. Now remember, Saudi Arabia and uh, United Arab Emirates are having a co-cooperative war on the people of Yemen. And it's just been devastating. A uh, new report states large number of migrant workers are being systematically killed on a daily basis by Saudi security officials. Ethiopians at a camp for African refugees at the Kur Maksar district of Aden, Yemen on March the 3rd, 2022. Ethiopian migrant workers are being systematically targeted and killed on a daily basis by Saudi security officials trying to deter people from crossing the Saudi-Yemen border. So again, it, it's this condition. They're trying to devastate Yemen even further. And so they're, by killing migrant workers, you know, they're really trying to keep any help out of Yemen. Okay, this is from... Ruyalves.medium.com Earth's hottest day ever since two shockwaves across the globe. So, you know, we're looking at more issues from global warming. My thoughts on global warming following Earth's all-time high. Alarming news hit like a heat wave punch and I can't help but feel a mix of anxiety and dismay. I feel I need to write and share my concern. You see, Monday, July the 3rd, just became the hottest day ever recorded. The numbers I'm reading about are astonishing. The average global temperature reached a scorching 17.01 degree Celsius or 62.62 Fahrenheit. You may hear those numbers you think that's not that high. That's global. That's including the poles which are the colder areas of the earth and the hottest points on earth the 
before uh, the previous record for Earth's hottest day was August two, 2016. The average global temperature on that day reached 16.92 degrees Celsius or 62.46 Fahrenheit. The heat wave was particularly felt in different parts of the United States, namely the South. Remember, we've been talking about the heat wave in Texas. We've had several, seen several people already killed because of the heat. But, pause. All right, this video, 340,000 UPS drivers in the U.S. are ready to strike if the company refuses to meet their demands for better pay and working conditions. We really need to start shutting things down. We're going to stop the economy when we go out on strike at UPS, right? And the politicians are going to listen. UPS delivery drivers across the country are ready to strike. They better not think that, you know, this is just a joke. When we say we're going to strike, we're going to strike. If UPS does not give an adequate answer to the demands of the UPS Teamsters, the strike will be inevitable. Every change that has been made right now has zero concessions and all gains for our members. And we're going to continue that without a ratified contract, meaning subject to the approval of our 340,000 members, we will not be working. During negotiations, UPS proposed just 55 extra cents per hour to its workforce while raking in $11 billion in profit last year. Your life is worth more than whatever profits these guys make. We have part-timers throughout this country that are on food stamps, that are on subsidized housing. Some are homeless. This historic strike would not only disrupt life as we know it in the U.S., but may galvanize the labor movement and working class struggles. This is our power right here. This is working class power. This could spark the movement right here, and I'm hoping that's what happens. The economy only serves the rich. It doesn't serve everyone. The working class, we have these different issues that are, are connected together, and we need to fight and we need to struggle together to get rid of them. We need to fight as one, right? You f with that one of us, you f with all of us, and that's how the way it goes, right? Absolutely. You know, I hope they get what's de what they have demanded <sighs> you know these companies and the rich people who control them all they care about is money they don't give a damn about the people and uh, you know we need the right to unionize to organize all right As the French start to target BlackRock, it goes underreported because the media is owned by BlackRock. And remember, though, that's that holding company that has bought up so much, um, so so much housing and everything else. It's just got its paws into everything and is just a serious threat to the world. So breaking news out of France right now, the French have stormed the BlackRock headquarters. Okay, hands up who still thinks this is about retirement reform or the reason the corporate media are under-reporting it or straight up just misrepresenting it is because protesting in France is nothing new. I mean, after all, I don't live in France. Who cares about France? I don't. They're targeting BlackRock. The media are not reporting on that because the media are BlackRock. Now, if you're unfamiliar and you want a quick crash course on BlackRock, you can go and watch this video that's pinned on my profile page and it will bring you up to speed.
Now, this may have been sparked by an undemocratically forced retirement reform, but the fact that they've ended up on BlackRock's door should signal one thing very clearly. The economy is global. We are all subservient to the same corporate global elite, and in their eyes, there are no French people, or English people, or American people, or South African people. There are only the ruling elite, and everybody else. The reason they keep events like this, which are popping up all over the world, by the way, as quiet as they can and make them look as separate as they can, is because they are terrified that we are going to start seeing ourselves the way they see us, as one. I think it's about time we start validating some of that paranoia. Now, I'm going to let the French play me out here because they've earned it. <laughs> Get them, France. Get them. Alright. Bully gets bullied after harassing street vendor in a racist tirade. Okay. She's not even supposed to be here. It's called soliciting, you stupid. Yeah. No, you know you can't fucking... Con can't record you, right? Yeah, I can! <laughs> no, I just recorded him. You're fucking 110 pounds, run your fucking mouth like a little fucking bitch who's not gonna do anything. I mean, you're a little punk. <laughs> Look at me talking shit to you. Dude, you're punk. fucking like what, 50, 60, and you live here? Come on, bro. I'll put you in the hospital. <laughs> Alright, cool, bro. So, outside of Eli Mee's house, he said he don't wanna see TJ, so we brought TJ to him. Oh, the dog's here. What's up, Eli? What's up, man? You want to be a racist prick? Come on, come outside now. You're so tough now, huh? You little bitch. What's up? What's up? What's up? Huh? You're so tough now, huh? Not so tough now. Pussy, open up! You wanna fuck with the street and you wanna fuck with the girls? Open up! Pussy! My let's verga way! Look at these guys here to protect you, huh? Uh, why, don't, why don't you guys do something yesterday when you was fucking antagonizing women, huh? Huh? Getting in their faces. Huh? Bullying women. All the vapors are sick of his shit. Told her that's a minor. Would, if he would tell her, like, to walk the dog, he would pay her like twenty dollars to walk the dog. She said okay. So this thing, he comes and he sends like like nude pictures, almost like this, oh. showing on his body. She's like, what the hell is that? Wow. I just, wow. Are, wow. Y are you guys listening? Thank you. And his name and come here. Can you believe this? We'll, we'll watch a movie. I'm up late doing training in my living room and watch a movie with her after work. Uh -huh. So don't know what time. Uh, they're not doing nothing about it. Really? I got it. I got it. Yeah, 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 we're gonna have a real day with man. Everybody sounds like the fucker needed to be called out for his bullshit. But the police, being the bitches they are, you know, they don't give a fuck about doing what's right. Man, we're only the law. That's what we do. And we talked about Israel invading the West Bank. Well, there's still protests going on about this. Pause. Go back. Yeah, their their leader, he's a shitbag. Tens of thousands are protesting against government and its anti-judicial coup. Get 
Benjamin shit fuck out of there. He does not need to be in charge. Anyway, last thing we want to look at from ProPublica. The Colorado River flooded uh, Chimahuevi land. Decades later, the tribe still struggle, struggles to take its share of water. We know the Colorado River has been devastated, you know, by suddenly it's drying up and everything now. The Chimahuevi's reservation fronts about 30 miles of the Colorado River, yet 97% of the tribe's water stays in the river, much of it used by Southern California cities. The tribe isn't paid for it. At night, the lights of Lake Havasu City's hotels, boat launches, and neighborhoods reflect off the reservoir that gave this busy Arizona tourist town its name. The federal government dammed the Colorado River just downstream in the 1930s, providing the water and recreation opportunities that have allowed the community to flourish. Hmm. The opposite side of the reservoir is dark and so quiet that water lapping on the shore and bats clicking overhead can be heard over a distant hum of boat engines. This is the Chimahuevi Indian Tribes Reservation in California. The water that rose behind Parker Dam to create Lake Havasu washed away homes and flooded about 7,000 acres of fertile Chimahuevi land, including where members grazed cattle. The communities across the reservoir reflect the vast divide in economic opportunities between Indian country and the rest of the West, which has been perpetuated in large part by who received water and who did not. In 1908, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the federal government owed tribes enough water to develop a permanent home on the reservations and that their water rights would hold senior priority, meaning they trumped those of others. In the Colorado River Basin, most tribes, even in a drought, should get water before Phoenix, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and elsewhere. But of course, they're not. More than a century later, only a few basin tribes have benefited from this system. Of those that have, some live near federally funded canals and pipelines that can deliver water to their land. Others receive money to build their own water systems and some negotiated for the right to market their water to other users. The Gila River Indian community, for instance, recently struck a deal with the federal government to forego using some of its water in exchange for up to $150 million over the next three years, depending how much water it conserves, and $83 million for a new pipeline. But, most of the basin's 30 rec federally recognized tribes have faced seemingly endless barriers to accessing and benefiting from all of the water to which they're entitled. The uh, Chimahuevi's reservation fronts about 30 miles of the Colorado River, yet 97% 
of the tribe's water remains in the river and ends up being used by Southern California cities. The tribe never receives a dollar for it. That's ridiculous. The water that has already been guaranteed to Basin tribes but remains unused totals at least 1 million acre feet per year, nearly one tenth of the Colorado River's flow in recent years and nearly four times the Las Vegas metro area's allocation. If sold outright, this water would be valued at more than five billion dollars. According to ProPublica and High Country News Analysis, for the Chimawevi, a tribe with about uh, 1,250 members, that means the amount of water it has on paper but doesn't use would have a one-time value of at least 50 Five million dollars. Steve Escobar, the Chimawabe's tribal administrator, grew up testing his metal against the Colorado River's currents, swimming across its cold waters upstream of the reservoir. He still thinks of the river in terms of struggle, but now it's a struggle for the tribe to get the same help from the federal government to access water as others have, or if not, to get compensation for what's legally theirs. All that development and governmental support that they provide every state, that should be the same thing they provide the two tribes. Escobar said, we've had to fight for everything out here. And that, that isn't right. We see a lot of bullshit still the government puts tribes through. It's just wrong, man. It really is complete and utter bullshit they do to the tribal peoples. Yeah. I'll go ahead in that here. As always, I'm going to have these links in the description box below the video. But, think, read, study, learn, you know, educate thyself. Someone tries to tell you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources and I'll be putting these sources in the description box below the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then... Later.